y'all, it's Belle. Today I'm gonna do part one. I have, I always have to do a lot of parts. I have so many books to talk about. This is gonna be my October possibility, but this will be the non spooky version. And then I'll do my possibility reads for October of my spooky reads next. We have The Hidden Knife by Melissa Marr. I am just so excited. This just looks and sounds so amazing. 20 years ago, a door opened between the world of humans and the netherware, allowing entry to its magical creatures. Some, like the Kelpies and fairies who bite, are best avoided, but the wise and wonderful gargoyles show a special affection for humans. Vicky has grown up under the watchful eye of a gargoyle named Rupert. She's gifted at swordcraft and magic, but can't figure out why her mother, once one of the queen's fearless ravens, keeps her hidden away and won't let her train at the elite Corvus school. When Vicky's world is rocked in a devastating attack, she realizes it is time for her to use her gifts. But knowing who to trust isn't easy, so she bands together with an alchemy student and a former street thief to seek answers on the perilous streets of Glass City. And all the while, the gargoyles watch and nudge toward healing, not harming. With their studying influence, Vicky and her friends just might be the generation to expose the court's secrets and find a way to a better future for all. So that just sounds so great. I'm really excited. Next is Me versus the Multiverse, Enough About Me by S.G. Wilson. I read, the author sent me the first book and it's just such a fun and humorous read. It's like all these other me's that they meet in this alternate world. It's like a Hollywood me, a motor me, resist me, meticulous me. Like there's all these versions of himself in this other world and it's just adventure, it's funny. And this is the second book and I bought it myself. So I can't wait to get to it. And that's the first book. So we have a couple books by Sarah Beth Durst. I fell in love with her writing with the girl who could not, who could not dream. That one right there. Such a great book. And then I read the Stone Girl story too and loved it. And I also have Spark and Journey Across the Hidden Seas, which I want to read. Um, and this is Catalyst. And then this is Even and Odd, which is her newest middle grade. So before I read her newest, I want to read another one of her oldest that I have. So I kind of wanted to read, read Catalyst and then this one. For Catalyst it says, Zoe named the kitten Pipsqueak because she was so tiny and promised to always take care of her. Then the kitten grew and grew. Now she's bigger than a horse and talking as well. Fleeing into the woods to escape the curious eyes of the internet, Zoe and her best friend Harrison must keep the giant cat hidden as they desperately search for a way to return her to normal size. If they don't succeed, Pipsqueak may never be safe again. But why does she grow so large in the first place? And what if trying to change her back leads to even greater danger? I mean a cat, a huge cat that can talk. Sign me up. <laughs> and then even and odd. Sisters even and odd are magical on alternating days. They may live in an ordinary corner of Connecticut, but they're born in Ferrith, land of spells and enchantment. Even loves magic and everything about it. Odd just wants to fit in with the volunteers at the little, local animal shelter. While Odd wishes her magic would go away, even practices magic every chance she gets, dreaming of the day she'll be ready to become a hero of Ferrith. When the hidden border between the mundane and magical world shuts abruptly, the girls find themselves trapped in Ferrith. Anxious to reunite with their parents and assisted by a young unicorn named Jeremy, they discover a wizard is stealing border magic and that the results are catastrophic, not just for them, but for all of Ferrath. Someone has to stop the wizard and even realizes she cannot wait until she feels ready. She must be a hero now. It just sounds so great. And a unicorn named Jeremy. I'm <laughs> so excited for these. Kind of on the same vein here, I have this book by Gabrielle K. Byrne. Rise of the Dragon Moon. And then I have her newest, one of her newest books I want to read that's in my, gonna be on my uh, spookier feels, all time tight reads video. So I wanted to read the older book I had of hers first too. Alone in the frozen world, Tolly's queendom is at the mercy, mercy of the dragons who killed her father. And she is certain it's only a matter of time before they come back to destroy what's left of her family. When the dragons rise and seize Tolly's mother, she will do anything to save her. Even trust a young dragon who may be the only key to the queen's release. With her sister and best friend at her side, Tully makes the treacherous journey across the vast ice barrens to Dragon Mountain, where long-held secrets are wait. Bearcats are on their trail, and dragons stalk them, but the greatest danger might be a mystery buried in Tully's past. Sounds so good. So excited. And on the back it just says, The ice never forgives. The ice never forgets. You cannot bend its will. You will break trying. So excited. We have the Seekers series. So far, the, the second book just came out. I don't know if there will be more, but there's two out currently. And these are by Alexander Ott. Even the backs are... I can't wait to find out who all these little little guys are. 
The first book says, 12-year-old Bryn has always dreamed of becoming a seeker, just like her dad. As a seeker, she would be one of the few tasked with collecting magical items from the wild realm and protecting the creatures who dwell there. There's just one problem. Only boys and men have ever been seekers. When a seeker position opens up, Bryn is determined to change that, even if not everyone is ready for change. When Ari, a big rival for the vacant position, shows up on her doorstep, Bryn is skeptical. But then he shows her his big secret, a hidden baby dragon just outside the village. He needs her help to care for it, and in return, Ari will help Bryn train and compete for the open seeker spot. With nothing to lose, Bryn agrees. Despite bonding over their mutual love of magical creatures, Bryn can't forget Ari is still her rival, and she is suspicious, suspicious of exactly how close he is to the current unrest in the village. And when Bryn realizes just how high the stakes are, can she save both her family and the realm? A lot of dragons going on in these books, and I'm loving it. <laughs> Very excited to get to these. Can't wait. And we have the Moonchild series. I don't know if it's just going to be a duology or if there will be more, but there's two right now. This one just came out recently. And these are by Aisha Bushby. Synopsis for the first book says, We all have our stories, and if we feed them, some may grow all the way to the moon. Magic has always been part of 12-year-old Amira's life, even though her world frowns upon it. When a mysterious storm begins to rage and Amira's magical cat companion goes missing, she decides to set sail. An extraordinary adventure awaits, one that will change Amara's life forever. Cat companion. Yep. Adventure. Magic. Beautiful cover. So excited. Next we have the third book in the Ben Archer series by Ray Knightley. And she sent me the first two books and I bought this one myself. The Alien Skill series. I was nervous at first because when I think of aliens I think of little green guys and I'm like I don't want to read about that. But this is not like that at all. I flew through that first book. It is so... I can see this becoming... Since it's so detailed and a series, uh, like a, it could be a movie, but I think a TV series would be better and it would be a great one. But with so many books, I've, it's been so hard to get back to the series. And I hate that because I like continuing series until it's done if they're all out. And so that drives me crazy with that I can't. So I can't wait to get through this one and continue the series. Next is the Spy School series for girls. It's the first And I've had this series for so long <laughs> and I want to finally get to it because I think this author has some other books she's recently put out that I really want to get to. So, and they just sound so good. So I'm very excited. Synopsis for the first book says, after another botched escape attempt from boarding school, Abigail is stunned to discover that the school she loathes is actually a cover for an elite spy ring called The Center. Not only that, her mother is the center's top agent and has been chasing a dangerous criminal called the Ghost for the past decade, and now her mother has gone MIA. Along with a frenemy, who isn't thrilled to be helping the newbie, and a mischievous boy from her class, Abigail must go through spy training 101 to try to complete her first and most important mission of all, Operation Save Mom. With false starts, hilarious mishaps, and a lot of heart, Abigail begins to prove to everyone, including herself, that she belongs. But the key to finding Abigail's mother is much closer than anyone could have imagined. And Abigail must use all her new skills when the ghost sets his sights on someone else. Abigail herself. So excited. This sounds so great. I love the school setting. Throw in some spy and mystery and a mission. Yes. We have these two. And this is the Heath Cousins series by Eileen Hobbs. I won the first two in a giveaway. The first book is really, really short. But then they get longer. And there's more books in the series. Which is why I haven't started this yet because I don't have them and I've cut back on my buying. But regardless of that, even if I know I can't buy the other books yet, I'm going to start these soon because I did win them and it's important to me to read them. On the first book it says, Addie B and her cousins Jack, Beanie, and Bodie are mourning the loss of their grandmother Winnie. While visiting their grandfather's beach house in Maine, Addie receives a mysterious treasure box once owned by her grandmother. In it is a moonstone ring and a mysterious poem from her grandmother. The poem leads Addie and her cousins to nearby, nearby Moonstone Cave, where together they enter a secret and magical garden and embark on the adventure of a lifetime. Along the way, they meet wonderful friends like Gemma, who reminds them all of a younger version of their grandmother, Shimani, a large white wolf, aww, and J J Jadari, a strange and smelly creature with whom they grow to love. During the adventure, they learn the most important lesson of all. They must work together if they want to escape the dangers ahead of them and find their way back home. A wolf, yay, and it's a good wolf it seems. Love it when they're not portrayed badly. So excited to get to those. The third and final book, not counting the prequel novella thingy, uh, for the Unmapped Chronicles. 
and I cannot wait to see the characters we meet in this one because there's different characters every time and see how the author write, wraps the story up. This is by Abby Elfenstone. This is Zeb Bolt and the Ember Scroll. And I can't wait to meet these two. And the little lizard on her shoulder. This is the third book, so I can't say much, but I'm so excited. So we have The Trouble with Half a Moon by Danette Vigilante. The author reached out to me and asked if I would read and review her book. And it's got a brand new cover, so she was excited to re-release it with this new cover, which I don't blame her. It is stunning. And I absolutely love T.L. Lugo Speaks No Evil. It is such a good book. So great. I flew through it. It is, oh, I loved it. So, of course, I said yes. And this just sounds like it's going to be very powerful, impactful, and emotional. Probably going to have to have some tissues. But it's the kind of emotional that I think it's important to read about. It's an important read and people need to talk and read more about this because there are kids that would be able to relate to this a lot and I think it could help a lot of kids. So It says, remember to believe even when you can't see. Ever since her brother's death, Deli's life has been quiet and sad. She lives with unspeakable guilt that, a, that the accident may have been all her fault. But Deli's world begins to change when new neighbors move into her apartment building. Miss Shirley with her wisdom and Corey, a five-year-old boy who is in desperate need of love and protection. Can Deli find the strength to do for him what she couldn't do for her brother? Save him? I think it deals with abuse and death. So we have The Deep End of Life by Benjamin K. Hewitt. On the bag it just says, Judith's eyebrow started it. It soared up her too pretty face like a volleyball in need of a good spiking, emphasizing the pounds of makeup she applied to get dad's attention. Showing just what kind of stepmom she'd be if only she got the chance. It was the arched eyebrow of war. And then the author of The Explorer's Code, Allison K. Hymas, is blurb saying, The deep end of life is as charming in its shallows as it is poignant in its depths. Marley's story and voice leap with charm while the struggle with her parents' divorce and her experience with therapy gives the story weight and soul. A refreshing book for young readers and parents alike. Can't wait to get to that. We have this advanced reader's copy I was sent. Kelsey Murphy and the Academy for Unbreakable Arts by Erica Lewis. I read the whole synopsis in my recent book haul. I'm just so excited about this one. Like I said in it, it's the school for evil meets Amari and the Night Brothers. Perfect for readers who've ever wondered what if Harry Potter had been sorted into Slytherin. I'm so excited. <laughs> this sounds like it was written for me. <laughs> so I cannot wait to get to this. And next, I'm also so excited for this. It's Fireborn by Aisling Fowler. This was sent to me by Harper Collins to read and review. And this comes out October 5th. It says, The great darkness has destroyed everything she knows, but a hero will rise from the ashes. One girl, one journey, a power that would change her world. North of the Fangs was where all the best stories and worst monsters came from. And that's where Seven was. And the back of the book is even... I cannot wait to get to this. I am so, so excited. And it just sounds so great. And I've been so excited for this for so long. And I cannot believe I'm actually holding it in my hand. I, like, hugged the package when I opened it and saw what this was. So I cannot wait. And if possible, I would like to get to these books. The third book also just came out. And even though I haven't been buying sequels of a series I haven't read yet, I'm probably going to get that one. I don't know if it's called the Tale of Magic series. but And it's by Chris Colfer. And I think it's set in the same world as Land of Stories, but it's completely different people. I'm not really sure. I don't want to read too much. Land of Stories, I mentioned in my favorite series video, is what got me into middle grade. And that, it's one of, of course, my favorite series of all time. It's an amazing series. I love it so much. The characters are amazing. The world, the way he writes, the atmosphere. And I will forever be grateful and it will always have a special place in my heart for getting me into middle grade. So, this series... I need to read it. I can't believe I haven't. I was waiting till more books were out because I knew, just like with the land of stories, how I flew through them, I'd, it's going to be impossible to wait for each next book. So now that there are three out, all right, I'm going to go ahead and start. <laughs> I don't know if it'll be more like the other series with more than three, but there's three right now, but I have the first two. This is the first one. Tale of Magic. This is a tale of witchcraft. This is the naked hardback of the first book. And this is the naked hardback of the second book. Alright, so that was just a quicker video of non-spooky season type breeds for October. 
the spooky possibility reads will probably be a lot longer. <laughs> so I don't know if that'll be one more video or two, but there's just so many. My TBR cart behind you, that's just the spooky, like the seasonal cart for whatever I want to read for that season during this time of year, is literally overflowing. Three books piled on top. <laughs> it's a little insane. So that'll be coming soon, but I hope you enjoyed part one of my possibility pile for October. And I hope you'll stick around and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye.